Lately, I had some people comment that I should put magnets on the top that they saw Alexi do it. I just wanted to give you guys a preview. I only put three on the top, three on the bottom, and it causes cogging. And the best way to see this is in the center plate itself. It's going to vibrate way more than what it normally would. And it's every time the two magnets line up over each other, they put off a uh, repulsive force. And that's apparent in the center disc. So go ahead and take a look at this next footage. And I just want to show you this. And then we're going to get on to a fog test. Yeah, you can see it. The center plate just absolutely going insane right now. It's shaking the whole entire thing. Again, just so we set this up a little bit. It is connected to the ceiling. It is done by rope. It's very clear that it is. And yeah, you can see the cogging effect every time. And you'll see it slow down and then it hit. And then slow down and hit. Slow down, hit. And does it every time. So if you put more magnets in there, obviously the effect wouldn't be as dramatic. It would have uh, you know, more of a, a milder run because it's happening faster. But I just wanted to show you this. It, uh, it actually looks cool. And if we wanted to build this thing into a full field, then the magnets on top and bottom make sense. Obviously, I have these about an inch off of uh, the top and an inch off the bottom. So if we created more space there, we can get less of an effect. If we put them closer together, we get more of an effect. And I used plastic bolts in this one in case you're wondering why. I had planned to put a lot more voltage into it, but uh, it, it just didn't go into it this time. But as you can see, definitely got vibration in the sound plate. Now, the, another question is, will we get that if we run smaller magnets or whatever? I got Neodymium 52s in here, and they're about an inch and a quarter wide, so they're pretty strong. Okay, we're still running the same exact magnet setup. This time, we're going to put fog into it. And I do have the Tesla coils on, my high voltage is on, and we all obviously have way more speed than I normally would run at any time on any of my uh, gravity flyers. But it's just to kind of show the effect, three magnets on top, three magnets on bottom. Let's see, okay, we're getting the field, we're not getting a heavy field, one of my, uh, one of my high voltage uh, packs or flybacks uh, went bad on me uh, right before the test so it just sucked I only have one in here so we're not getting as big a field as we should and you can't really see it right there but it is lighting up and this thing causes so much vibration you can see the bolts on the top coming loose it doesn't like this all right fog machine on It's actually getting a fairly good push out. Right from the center, it's pushing right out. Probably has to do with the flapping plate. I don't know that you can see it that well. It, it, it takes it into the center and then pushes it right out on the level of the plate. See if we can't get some other angles on this thing. There you can see the high voltage sparking off a little bit. Yeah, you can see a decent flow on that on the right side there. The fog machine's kind of out of control sometimes, guys. I'm sorry for that.
once it gets past this initial push, there's not a whole lot going on. It's pretty calm. It's just when it gets down to that plate at these speeds, it's putting a lot more in the air. And that plate vibrating like crazy in there. I guess for those who wanted more resonance in their center plate, this is the way to get it. Yeah, it makes the whole thing bounce everywhere. You can't even get that high voltage wire on there good. Let's see, we'll go some more fog. It's right into the center. You know, part of the reason I'm doing this is I got the high voltage and stuff on. I'm looking to see if any of that fog clings around anything. At this point, it's just, it's moving it like you would expect any kind of rotating anything would move it. But it's not going like a fan would. It's not sucking in, not not doing drastic changes. Yeah, like, this is that same grabbing flyer, guys, that I, <laughs> I took last week and ripped all that voltage through. You see, I had to rebuild all the parts. And the legs on it, by the way, they come down. They're plastic because I was going to run more high voltage in it. That's why I took the metal ones out, and it's probably not a good, good idea to run the plastic ones at all. Yeah. Maybe you see a little bit coming on the edge. Let's see. There we go. You would think it's you'd see a heavy movement in the sweeping around when it goes around it, but we're not seeing that here. So, yeah, it's just real quick in, holds it, and goes. That's it. You know, sometimes this is just interesting to see, guys. When you get to look back on some of this stuff. Well, we still got a field in there. You can see it blinking a little bit. It looks better in person, I can tell you that. So. Again, I was hoping, hoping to see a field around this thing. I mean, I'm getting the light to light up, but I'm not getting, not getting any breakage as far as is there an external field that you can see on this? I guess I was just uh, hoping for the best, I guess. But. Let's see if we can't get a few more angles on this before we're done. Adjust the camera here. See what it looks like. That fog machine takes a minute to rebound. There it goes. You can see a little bit of rotational airflow. I wonder as well if those magnets, the way they're set up, are having an effect on this. We obviously know it does for the center plate when it moves that much. So I wonder if they're having a more drastic effect than normally what I would get 
So I run at low speed. At low speed, this thing, like silent night, man, you never know it's there. The high speed is making a big difference, especially with that center plate vibrating. Almost has like a vacuum effect in it. Pulls it in one side and it's just kind of blowing it out the other. Yeah, look at that. Past that initial part, man. It's just sitting there. I mean, you can see the fog in the air, and I don't see a whole lot of movement right now. I'll tell you what, though, it's staying pretty steady in the air. It's not swinging at all. You know, you'd think with this much vibration in there, you'd get it to swing. I guess the centrifugal force is doing its job and keeping it steady. You know, another thing to note, this thing may swing a little bit if you only had the magnets on the bottom. This is a really well-balanced deal here. If you just had magnets on the bottom, it obviously changed the test a little bit. So, yeah, it just, just sucks in a little bit, immediately ejects it, and then for the rest of the time, if it's not anywhere near that center plate, it doesn't do anything. Or, it's, excuse me, if it's not by the rotational plate then the fog really doesn't matter. It's not even affecting it. It's only when it comes into contact with the rotational disc. Huh. I can only imagine what Alexi's going through. He probably made that plate more solid in the second one so he didn't have all this vibration in there i mean you'll still pick it up on an oscilloscope when it's thicker plate but you won't see something like this you won't see it vibrate like this just shocked at how steady it is. The thing isn't moving, man. I mean, we probably got it, what, three feet off the ceiling right there? Maybe four? And it just stays in the same spot. Kind of crazy. I included a couple of still shots in here in case you wanted to take a look at it, the magnet configuration or whatever. Anyway, if you like what you saw here today, please like, share, subscribe, and comment. Do all those fun things, and have yourself a great day. Thank you.